Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn how to leverage ChatGPT to perform code reviews. I can simply ask ChatGPT to tell me what does it think of a given code in one paragraph. Let me show you. Here I just picked a very simple function, which is the function called mySum. This function simply sums up X and Y arguments and just returns basically um, the sum value. And here I'm just performing function call, calling that function, sending it arguments, which is 5 and 10. So if I just say, what do you think of this code in one paragraph? Well, I tell you what, this code defines a function, call it my sum. This function is going to take in two arguments, x and y. It's going to add them, return back z. The function then returns the value of z. The code then calls the my sum function with arguments. The function is executed. And then it's going to tell you, therefore, the code simply computes a sum of 5 and 10 using my sum function and then does nothing with the result. OK, what I could do as well next is, well, I can ask ChatGPT, what do you think of this code, but in detail? And here we go. This code defines the functions, pretty much the same explanation. But here, basically, ChatGPT added an additional improvement. I tell you, well, one potential improvement to this code could be to assign the results of the function to a variable so that it can be used later in the program. And this is basically, so when you call this function, here is the result need to be put in another variable, call it result. And here it's just giving you an additional uh, modification or kind of feedback based on the code you provide. What I could do as well is I can say any other recommendations and press enter and let's see. Yes, there are a few more recommendations as well that could be made. One of them is adding doc strings. So adding documentation basically to the function use descriptive variables names. So instead of using X and Y, you can actually use more uh, variable names that uh, make the code a little bit more readable. You can also consider adding error handling as well. So for example, in this case, if the function is called with arguments that are not numbers, it will raise a type error as an example. So you will see the code here has been updated to include or consider the error handling. Okay, so Overall, the original code was simple and functional. These changes will make the code more robust, easier to understand, and more reusable. OK, what I could do next is I would like to ask ChatGPT to check whether we have potential security vulnerabilities in our code or not. And um, for that case, I'm going to basically include a little bit more advanced code. Let me show you what do I mean by this. So. If you recall, this code is the same code that we used before. And here I'm asking ChatGPT, are there any potential security vulnerabilities in the code? Does it handle error, for example, and exceptions appropriately? This is the exact same code that I showed you earlier that basically just reads the data and just train a machine learning regression model to um, predict our chances of university admission. And at the end, it shows all the different, calculate all the different metrics, basically, and print them to the screen. If you press enter, and I tell you, well, there don't appear to be any major security vulnerabilities in this code, since it's just reading data from a CSV file, plotting graphs, and training machine learning model. However, there are a few things to note regarding error handling and exceptions. Telling you, well, there is commented out code that scales the input and output data. If you recall, we had the uh, standard scaler has been commented out. Here we also telling you the code does not handle missing values in a robust way. The code does not include any exception handling for the XGBoost model, as an example. Again, pretty powerful, really useful tool that you can leverage. And basically, just all you need to do, use the exact same prompt. And instead of pasting my code, you can just include your code in there. All right. So what I could ask ChatGPT next is, basically, does a given code follow coding best practices and standards or not? And I can also ask whether the code is readable, maintainable, and efficient. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say, does the code follow coding best practice and standards? Is it readable, maintainable, and efficient? And of course, here I'm referring to the code, basically, that I had in the previous prompt. And here it's going to tell you, well, the code appears to follow some coding best practices and standards, which is great. It includes comments to describe what each section includes. And also the code also follows the PEP8 style, which is simply a, a styling guide for Python code. And you can see, however, there are some few areas of improvement. For example, there are several commented out sections of the code. So if you recall, we had some section with the scaling part. This has been commented out. 
that could be removed to improve clarity and reduce clutter. That's a good point. The second point, there are several lines of code that are not indented properly. So this makes the code harder to read, okay? So basically it's an incredible tool that you can simply use as some sort of like uh, a coding buddy or a, gui or a guidance, basically. And then here three, the code could be more efficient in some places. For example, here making recommendation to the Seaborn heat map as an example. And then finally, there is a lot of code in a single cell. Basically, ChatGPT is recommending that you break that code or split it into separate cells to make it more readable. Okay, what I could ask next is, well, does this code contain any inconsistencies? I tell you, well, I cannot determine if the code contain any inconsistencies. Please provide the code so that I can review it. So basically what I need to do right now, I need to copy the code again. So let me do that. So I'm going to paste it here, and then I'm going to ask the same question. Basically, does this code contain any inconsistencies? Okay, let's go ahead and test it out. And I tell you what, the code does not contain any syntax error or obvious inconsistencies. However, there are a few areas for improvement. The comments, okay, the comments could be more consistent in terms of capitalization and punctuations. The variable names are mostly inconsistent, mostly consistent, but there are a few places where they are inconsistent. For example, the input and output data are stored in uppercase variables X and Y, while the data frame is stored in lowercase university underscore df. It's a good point. Basically, we need to incorporate that in our code. The commented our code scaling as input, the and the output could be removed to improve clarity and, of course, remove clutter as well. The scatterplot loop could be more clear by including an indentation as well for the sns.scatterplot. And there are no comments or explanation for the machine learning model, training, and evaluation. This could be helpful if you would like to share that code with other people. Okay, pretty powerful suggestions. Next. I can basically ask whether if we have compatibility issues or dependencies that could affect the code functionality. So I can simply ask that question and I can tell you, well, there are potential compatibility issues. And if you recall, because we are using other libraries such as Seaborn, Pandas, Matplotlib, NumPy, and XGBoost, of course, these libraries, if they are not installed properly or if they are not compatible, for example, with our version of Python, this could cause issues. This is a good point. The code uses Python 3 syntax, so it may not be compatible with other older version, for example, with Python 2.7. The code relies on the CSV file university admission CSV being present in the working directory. If the file is missing, of course, the code is not going to work. The machine learning code relies on having a training data set, X train and Y train, and the testing data set as well. And if these data set are missing, then or any modification happened to them, the code will not going to work. And then finally, the code relies on having enough memory available to load the data set and train the machine learning model. Again, pretty amazing, really powerful uh, feedback. Okay, next, I can also ask ChatGPT whether we have performance or bottleneck issues in our code. So let's go ahead and ask. So I'm gonna tell you, well, there are several potential performance issues. One, the code loads the entire CSV file into memory with using pandas, of course. And this could simply um, might be slow and memory intensive for a large, data set. The code also includes several visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Also, the code trains an XGBoost model, a regression model, which can be very computationally expensive. And the code does not include any parallelization or optimization techniques, for example. So basics recommending that when you train XGBoost algorithm, maybe you need to improve the performance by running it on a multi-core processors or distributed computing systems. And then finally, the code does not include any error handling or exception handling or for memory or performance issues as well. Okay, next, I can simply ask ChatGPT, what are the code convention for Python? And then it's gonna tell you, well, there is some uh, coding basically conventions. One of them is what we call it PEP8 or Python Enhancement Proposal 8. And basically this is a standard, widely known standard that can kind of set the uh, style for Python to ensure a consistent, readable, and easy to maintain code. Basically, I tell you, these are kind of the key conventions when it comes to indentation, line length, naming convention, comments, and so on. So what I could do is I can say, well, does this code adhere to PEP8 style guide for Python code? And 
it's going to tell you when. Overall, the code appears to adhere to the PAP style, which is great. Here are some specific examples. Indentation, it's going to tell you the code uses four spaces for indentation. Line length, naming convention, comments, import statements. And again, this is pretty incredible. Um, and that's it. That's simply all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next lesson.